I followed all the uh, Torchmate instructions to load the controller program into the computer. And um, one of the things that you're going to definitely want to do once you have the computer hooked up to the machine and everything seems to be kind of the way that it should be, is you're going to want to index the computer to the actual 2x2 two two cutting system. And what I mean by index is there's a little control uh, tab down in the lower left corner of the screen. And when you press the, the button to move the machine, you want it to be moving in the same direction that it is on the screen so that you know how the machine is going to react in relation to what you're actually seeing on the computer screen. And so I went through and organized, uh, reorganized the uh, X and Y axes so that it will be synchronized with the computer screen. So when I jog and when I find zero, it matches. After that, um, I designed some um, parts in the uh, CAD program and saved them as the G code and then imported them into the software. Um, created the tool pass, follow, followed all the torch main instructions. I'm not going to go through a whole bunch of details um, on that. Um, but basically I've, I've created some squares with some circles in them and hopefully you can kind of see that on the computer screen. Now one question that a lot of people are going to have is, well, how do I determine what the feed rates need to be? Um, well, your plasma torch manufacturer most of the time makes that fairly easy. Um, what I was able to print off or photocopy out of my actual plasma manual is a little cheat sheet that goes through different types of materials and the thickness. And it also tells you what your speed um, in inches should be. So it has aluminum, it has mild steel, and it has stainless. So you can take whatever material you have and it'll tell you kind of what the recommended amperage should be as well as the speed. So this is definitely something you're going to want to figure out um, from your plasma. Now the first washer that we tried to cut out, um, you can see left the center hole. It left the blank in there. And one of the reasons why it did that was there's a thing called pierce delay. Well, in the instructions, there's nothing that really kind of talks to you how to figure out where the pierce delay is easily. So I just quickly made a phone call to Torchmate Tech Support, and they talked me through exactly how I needed to modify the program to compensate for this. And basically, the reason this happened was the CNC cutter started moving before my plasma torch actually had time to create an arc. And that's why it did that. So as for our first cut sample, this is pretty good. We've got the speed set up pretty well. There's no lot, not a lot of slag on this stuff. And once we get the pierce delay uh, setting dialed in, I think we're going to be able to cut some pretty nice parts. So the Torchmate is totally ready to cut um, a sample part so I can show you guys how it actually works. Um, I've got the G-code loaded into the program. I've got the machine on. I'm going to have to turn the plasma on, but before I actually turn the plasma on, I'm going to do a dry run through so that I know that the machine is actually going to stay on the part while it's cutting. Um, so basically what I've done is I've just turned the, turned the plasma off and I'm going to run the machine, run the 2x2 two two through the program. Um, and then if all looks like it's going to work well, then we're actually going to cut the part. So as it's actually running through the program, I can actually see its progress on the drawing. It shows blue and um, it looks like it's going to work pretty well. Um, I've adjusted the pierce delay and it seems to be working pretty well. So we're going to go ahead and stop it right there and reset it to zero and then cut apart. Well now here's the moment of truth. 
I've got the uh, torch mate zeroed on the part. The plasma is up and running. I've adjusted the pierce delay so that hopefully it will cut all the way through the hole. And here we go. So here are the results after our second attempt. Uh, most of the edges are pretty good. There's a little bit of slag. We did have one little problem right there on that corner. Hopefully you guys there it focused. As you can see, this little tip right there didn't actually cut off. So we're going to have to adjust the lead in and lead out time. Um, and it's a little rougher than we'd like to see there. but other spots it actually works really really well. The circle is really good cut all the way through so my pierce delay adjustment worked. Slag will easily come off. Um, all in all I think that we're doing pretty well.